Well, now that you know more of what's going on in the Sweet Baby Ink debacle, it seems it's just snowballing out of control where we have game journalists, we have BBC hosts completely going off the rails. We're going to take a look at Jules Hardy. She is a uh, presenter host of CBBC, the BAFA and Gran Turismo Ferrari as an agent at Big Red Talent. It's an absolute... Uh, interesting take that we've got here gamer girl is out again so obviously this has more things to do with sweet baby ink this one in particular comes from jules hardy yesterday i brought you the stuff about black girls and gamers and now we're talking about how the purge of the gamers need to happen in the industry if you like the content i make here please do me a favor subscribe today because this is an ongoing saga and I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. Now, Jules Hardy here. Uh, can we agree for round two of this, talking about Gamergate, it can be the final purge of these kinds of gamers. It's 2024, I've been arguing about this for decades. Can we have the last detox of these dudes so we can get back to the positive gaming community that we've been creating. It hasn't been exactly positive when we see nothing but layoffs, we see nothing but games failing because it's not what gamers want to play. It's not the escapism that we're looking for. It's not where we can enjoy our time together. This comes from Jules Hardy. Of course they've reposted the Kutaku art article that was nothing but spreading disinformation and lies about the gaming community and how the Sweet Baby Inc. situation uh, came about. Now, this is in response to the Black Girls Gamers. Oh, we are re really got you pressed just by existing. We never worked with Sweet Baby Inc. You know, you all saw Black and Consulting and decided that we work together. Sounds like racism. No, no. This is the industry now where there's several parts of these consultancy agencies are working besides themselves and doing the same thing. It's the narrative that has been pushed upon the gaming industry and it's weaseled its way through the entire thing. You've got holes in every part and every facet of the gaming industry that just is this push, is this push to say that diversity must be the number one thing that in the storytelling elements of gaming. Now, the number one thing in the storytelling of elements of gaming needs to be fun, enjoyable content and story driven content that actually makes sense. That's the problem here. What has been pushed these narrative design companies um, pretty much have been told for the Sweet Baby Inc. side, they're terrifying the marketing departments of these companies saying, if you don't do this, we're going to bring hell and we're going to make your life living hell. So just do this and play along with us and we will make these new games and they will be the story you want to tell and the gamers will have to accept it. In, in response, they call us picky babies over that. That's an absolute terrible, terrible way to approach a business approach. The things about games, we want, we want to play a game. Is it functional? Does it work? Do these games run at 60 frames per second? And I really do push for that 60 frames per second for games. It's up to me if I'm going to mod it and then I, I limit my own experience of lowering it down. That's one thing. But when the games get limited to 60 frames because of poor optimization uh, for your PC gaming, then you have more issues. But in response to that, instead of focusing on the games, the way the games that we should be playing, it's about the narrative. It's about the story that they're going to tell. Well, this isn't no daytime soap. This isn't no movie. This is a video game. We spend thousands of dollars a year on video games and we want to be able to escape into these video games without being told that we're doing the world a, a social justice wrong 
because we didn't want to push the narrative. We didn't want to have the narrative shoved down our throat. Now, Melanie Mack, also another content creator who's come under fire from Alyssa McCante, which is also the person that uh, uh, wrote the Kotaku article. That's a whole different story in everything. AKA, you want to purge real gamers in favor of Activision who can't hang in a multiplayer lobby without having a meltdown or who can't navigate a single player game without yellow paint, shiny ledges, and a character telling them what to do. And Jules comes back, nah, I want to purge the hate and vitriol from gamers who refuse to allow gaming to evolve and adapt as humans are doing. So affirmative action. This is what happened back in the 90s, 80s. All that stuff that happened back then, affirmative action where you've got to prop one person up above another person just to right the wrongs of the past. That's not how you change games. That's not how you rewrite games. That's not how you storytell. We want stories that have flaws. We want stories that have the bad things happen to the good guys. We want good versus evil. We don't want suddenly someone being omitted for the color of their skin or changing the person that's in there because of the color of their skin or because they have sex with someone else that's not the norm. That, that's not what people want in a video game. And when those things happen in a video game, all of a sudden it's like, okay, well, I don't like this. I'm not going to play this. Well, then you suddenly don't want to play these games. Then you get calls and called a racist, a bigot and everything else out there. And that's why where the games industry is fallen right now. When you do nothing but call the gamers that no longer want to play your game all these isms, then it becomes a battleground. And that's where we are today. You, you talk about the hate and vitriol. Gamers have gotten some of the worst of it. They have been told, they keep getting articles written about them uh, that are nothing but lies. They, they keep getting told that if we don't play the games that we don't like, that we're not good and we're not promoting social justice. No, most of us, most of us regular folk, most of us regular gamers like myself, we don't see it that way. We see games as a way to escape the realities of the world, to escape the wars, to escape what's going on in the world. If you have a bad day at work, at least you can normally come home and play a video game and not have a bad time. You have a good time. But that's the thing. These video games, these narratives that are completely changing them up, they're no longer a fun ordeal. They become work and they become something that is no longer escapism. And that's why we are seeing these things. I, want, I have no problem with opposing viewpoints, but hate, violence, and aggressive behavior isn't okay any realm you live within unfortunately there's 3.3 billion gamers and a certain percentage of those uh gamers will be hateful people and that's part of the online entertainment world so you know social media has really pushed the the bad stuff up to the top and this is the 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 state that we see things in all the bad stuff gets pushed to the top. You don't see what happens where 80% or 90% of the gamers don't give two effing craps about these things. But I still sit here and make videos on them because everyone wants to see this. Everyone wants to have a discussion about this. And I think it's been going on for a long enough time. We're, we're talking back to 2014 when Gamergate first started. And now we're back to today where now it's the second version of it. And this is a person that wants to just purge all of these people from the space. You know, when you go look at the uh, at Kelly here, the Xbox marketer, uh, I believe is who it is, uh, global marketing, games marketing, Xbox, sometimes streamer, host GT. Um, so raise your hand if you're not a white man who buys video games. Who the frick cares? Who buys video games? Are you buying the video games? Then that, yeah. Why does it matter if you're a white dude? No hate to white dudes. Just another day in the gaming industry that minorities have to fight to prove they exist. Trust me, they exist. We see them all. We like to like to welcome in the multiculturalism that we see in video games and in our daily lives. 
I thoroughly enjoy some things that we that we get to do but suddenly it becomes more about oh if you're white you have no say here you have absolutely no take or no say and this is what we mean but of course this means if you have an opposing opposing viewpoint to that you're just a white dude in their basement that has absolutely no say in what happens in the industry you have to take your salt you have to be the picky baby that you are and just deal with it and you're no longer allowed to have a, a, a say at the table on this situation anyway i'm your proud canadian phoenix in a shadow i'm signing off here this is another thing that's just going on here in the in the gamer world for the industry how it's the ongoing battle of the the gamers and the industry you know these things these things they just continue to propel and we're going to see more it's not it hasn't even hit critical mass yet and this is where we're at. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have yourselves a great day. Don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs>